Hey, what's up guys? This is Phil Eats from Arids Only. This is Pork Chop, my uh, adult male Egyptian Euromastix. Um, I wanted to do a sort of like a short little, just a little species profile on Egyptian Euromastix because um, we just saw another big shipment of those come in to the United States, a bunch of babies, and I feel like it's worth talking about these guys because um, they're one of the more popular uh, species of Euromastix, but um, much like many other large reptile pets, uh, there are a lot of things that you need to know when you're going to care for a, an animal that gets bigger than this because he's not even full grown yet. So um, first thing I want to say is that there are uh, three subspecies of Egyptian Euromastix. There's, um, he's not terribly happy with me either. There's uh, Euromastix aegypticus, this guy, and then there's Euromastix aegypticus microlepis, which is a... Um, they're the sort of more patterned version of Egyptian. There are a few other distinguishing features as well, but that's the main distinction. Um, these guys are the most common. And then there's another species which uh, we haven't really seen in the United States yet, uh, or probably won't, which is Euromastix aegypticus leptini, um, which is another beautiful form of uh, Egyptian that uh, exists around Oman. Um, as their name would indicate, they hail from Egypt and a handful of other surrounding countries. They actually have, actually have a pretty substantial range in the wild. Um, they're actually eating as food out there too, uh, which is, which is pretty wild. People think that's kind of a drag, but uh, you know, people got to eat, man. It's all good. Um, <laughs> he's not terribly happy with me. Um, now in this last major shipment, it was all babies that came in. So we're talking, I got a, I got a couple of them too. So that we're talking four inches long, just tiny little guys. Um, but, uh, they get massive. These are huge lizards. This guy is 22 inches long and is quite a powerful little asshole. He, he didn't like me too much. Um, and especially the bigger they get, the more dangerous they can be. Um, the biggest one I've ever seen, uh, was a 32 inch male named Grover owned by a guy named Ed Carr back in the day. Any of you who frequented the kingsnake.com forums for Euromastix might've seen the Egyptians he had back in the day. I don't know what happened to him. His big male had a big burn or a, um, like a scarring on his back from a fungal infection. It was really intense, but he had some great animals. He did a good job. This guy is only six years old, so he's gonna get much, much bigger. Uh, maybe not a whole lot longer, I mean, but he can get 10 inches longer than this and much bigger. His head is pretty big and, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, can, you know, it's just a big animal, big powerful lizard. If that animal's not tame, if you're not aware of the body language of Euromastix, this guy could do some serious damage to you. Uh, pork chop here has bitten me more than once, uh, usually when I'm being an idiot, and he has been, thankfully, very kind and just bitten me, held on for a minute, and then let go. He didn't decide to rip shake around my finger. He didn't decide to roll. Uh, and he's been very kind about not slapping me with that nail tail he's got here. It's really quite potent. Um, so a couple consider considerations to make if you're going to get an Egyptian Euromastix. They get huge. The cages that I offer to these guys are six feet by four feet. And I'm planning, uh, as soon as I move into a larger space, I'm going to build these guys eight foot by four foot pens. Okay. Uh, they're huge lizards that usually cover, have a really massive territory in the wild. They need a lot of exercise and a lot of heat. If your average Euromastix basking temperature is somewhere around about 125 degrees, you have to understand that this entire animal has to be able to reach that temperature, not just one part of him on his back. So that's going to require multiple heat lamps, multiple UV lights on a massive enclosure to properly house this animal for the length of time that you're going to have it. These things can probably live over 50 years. We don't really know the exact, uh, you know, how, like longevity um, of Egyptian Euromastix, but it's a long time. So it's a big commitment and it's really important that you take it seriously. These are smart, incredibly cool, incredibly deserving animals, and they need your time and your care. So some, that's very important to consider. Um, another consideration is food. This guy will eat anything I throw in his cage in terms of greens, and he will not he barely slows down in the winter. So he's, even right now, it's the dead of cooling, he still is trying to eat tons and tons of greens every day. So that's another thing. They're, they're not cheap pets, they're expensive. Um, so all of those things are things that you should really consider before getting 
Well, you should consider all of the ramifications of having a pet before you get any pet, of course, but especially something like a large lizard that can be potentially dangerous, not lethal by any means, they're cool, but uh, you don't wanna get bitten by them regardless. Um, and something they need to consider in terms of cost and long-term commitment because they're long-lived and they eat a lot. Um, now, Egyptian Euromastics can tame down very, very well. This guy's not a great example of it. He's uh, um, just doesn't like me too much. He, he I, In his big pen over here, he comes running at me. I've posted some of these videos on my Instagram. He is super territorial. So the second he sees me walk into the room, he comes flying over the end of his pen. And at first, it's all territory response and breeding response. And then the second he realizes that I'm bringing him food, it's all food response. So he will go crazy uh, for any kind of food that I can possibly offer him. Um, and so he may be a bad example of it, but a lot of Egyptians, especially with time, can get really, really tame and become wonderful pets. They're so cool. Um, yeah, they may not be as colorful as like an ornate or uh, you know a, a Moroccan, but I love this elephant gray. I think it's a super cool look. Um, and he's just, he's a beast. That's a badass lizard, right? Who doesn't, who wouldn't like a cool lizard like this? I mean, unless you don't like lizards and then you're probably pretty weird. But uh, yeah, that's him. Pork chop to the world. <laughs> Thanks. He's a big boy.